Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Grace and this is the Intuitive Lens on YouTube. I talk about the astrology and uh, for the week and we'll go into a tarot reading for the collective. The intention and purpose of this is to give you a brief overview of the collective energies, what may or may not be influencing you during this time. Uh, we just all experienced the new moon eclipse in Libra over the weekend. I am currently recording this still within that um, new moon portal energy, you know, this eclipse energy. Um, people give a lot of emphasis on the eclipses. They are really important. This is energetically can be considered times to sort of jump timelines, if you will. And especially with Libra, the moon being in Libra, um, hopefully we're finding ways that we can make quantum leaps towards balance and harmony between um, not only within ourselves, but between our between ourselves and our relationships, our partnerships, because Libra rules the seventh house, and uh, it's been it is a very important transit, and it's something that's going to be impacting us for the next couple years. Because I said it already, and I'll say it again, but the North Node and South Node have moved into Aries and Libra respectively. So we're going to talk a lot about this axis, the first and seventh house axis, Aries, Libra axis. How do they relate? How are they, you know, they're, they're opposites, but really when we look at axis, we think about this from all angles of, of integration. And so I want to share just a really quick personal story. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I just want to give you an example of this energy and the way it's sort of manifested in my life this weekend. This past weekend, I was supposed to be camping for the new moon eclipse. And I just had a feeling that something was going to be up. So we're checking the weather. Sure enough, it's going to be rainy the whole time. So we canceled actually the camping plans. That same week, I found out that my car needs a repair. And not only that, I somehow managed to mess up my shoulder. Um, I'm in a lot of pain right now, but just enough not in pain to actually go through with this video. I had debated whether I was going to do it or not, but here we are. So bear with me if my mind appears to stop working at some point because of pain. So this first and seventh house, you know, the eclipse energy, I was really getting this energy of grounding yourself, grounding myself. I mean, this doesn't have to be for everybody, but maybe it resonates for you too, this idea of like really sit and be aware of what's happening around you. And so for me, definitely the universe, <clears throat> I received this message, right? I mean, I don't know what else I would have been doing. You know, we canceled our plans. We did that. And um, sometimes, you know, the, what I take away from this is that sometimes things appear to fall apart in order for them to come into balance, to come into harmony and to be put back together. I think about, for example, my, my physical injuries. I've been in physical therapy. Well, I had done physical therapy. I had done Cairo. I've done all these other things. I've then took you know, my own healing into my own hands, learned Reiki, learned how to train my body physically at boot camp, and I'm doing a month of yoga. And I feel like all of this matters. Like we're I'm working out my body and sometimes it is two steps forward and one step back. And so we have this energy of sacrifice that I think can be, uh, we can discuss a bit because of the transits this week and because of, you know, Libra energy and how much we, how much Libra sacrifices, um, in terms of individuality. And the Aries Libra axis, this nodal shift collectively for the next uh, year, 18 months, two years, whatever it is, is asking us just that. How much are you sacrificing of your own vitality, your own personality, in order to be in harmony in a greater context, right? In your relationships, your partnerships, your marriage, your, your friendships, you know, you could also say the opposite as well. You know, what are you sacrificing in your relationships in order to be more yourself? Sometimes it happens the opposite way as well. So just think about this theme this week of sacrifice along with the first and seventh house, this Aries Libra axis. Um, Aries in the first house is about self-awareness whereas seventh is concern for others. So 
when it comes to the nodes, we have several north node slash south node transits. The nodes are always opposite each other, so if the sun is opposite north node, it's conjunct south node. That's just how it works. So sun opposite north node. If north node is your purpose, your drive, like what you're meant to uncover, the sun is, again, first house, your ego, your identity, and your self-awareness. How is your ego getting in the way of your purpose? And how does alignment with your greater purpose uh, make it so that you grow beyond your ego, have like an ego death, so to speak? That is also a sacrifice. When you sacrifice yourself for the greater good, when you sacrifice old parts of you, conditioned parts of you, in order to step into your empowerment and what you're able to do, not just for yourself, but um, for your family, your friends, and the people that you love, for your community. Uh, Mercury is closely following the sun here. We do have um, a sun and Mercury conjunction, which is good for communication and just sort of being um, in a more lucid state of mind that's coming up uh, towards the end of the week. Um, but I also say that because then Mercury is also opposite node. Right? This is all within a few, few days. Sun opposite node, Mercury opposite node, then Sun, Mercury conjunction. Mercury and, Mercury and the Sun, the first and the third house, the self, personality, self-awareness, uh, your vitality, and third house of intellect, communication, and that, your first impressions. Remember I, I said Mercury rules the first 13 years of your life, your first impressions, how we come across. And what's sandwiched in the middle? That's the second house, Taurus, which we talked a lot about previously. Taurus represents our values. So even though it's not highlighted this week, actually we, we do have um, on Sunday a Venus trying Jupiter, which is in Taurus. We do eventually this week come into this energy of we're doing this because this is what we care about. This is what we find value and this is what we find beautiful. And this week we want to use this challenging energy of um, the things I'm choosing to sacrifice for the greater good and how is that bringing you into alignment with the things that you truly care about. So whether it's your pride, your ego, you know, your, sen your sense of righteousness, This is a really intense energy as well. With this week, we have two square Pluto. So again, Mercury square Pluto, Sun square Pluto. Mercury and the Sun are like best buds this week for some reason. And it's been happening a lot. Mercury is moving into Scorpio, so that's going to be pretty uh, intense in another way. Our communication can get much deeper. Um, if you know Scorpios, have Scorpios in your life. Uh, when they do speak, it's... Um, usually pretty deep, right? Something you can tell that a Scorpio um, gets to the heart of the matter pretty quickly. Scorpios also have this, um, this thing with trust, right? And so we have like an angle of vulnerability this week of if something is intense, it can be very quickly dissipated by being open and honest about something. And I feel like there's this rawness coming out this week as we uncover, for example, North Node act these these North Node activations can make it seem like we have no other choice but to um, shine light on, bring awareness to what we're meant to do, what we feel we're meant to do. And Pluto, that Sun and Mercury square Pluto, this is sort of bringing in that. Um, I don't want to say an energy of conflict. It could be, it could feel conflicting. It could feel deeply conflicting. I think it's just like a zero to a hundred kind of energy. And I think that there will be challenges or things that sort of push you to the edge of your comfort zone in order for you to um, speak your truth. So again, we have the, this, this energy wanting us to sort of place, place ourselves on this axis this first house to seventh house axis, just and being bringing an awareness into where are you now? Where are your decisions? Are you doing things mostly for others? Are you doing things mostly for yourself? And how do your values, your conditioned values place you? Just an awareness of this. Yeah, Mercury and Scorpio, good for going deep, being strategic. 
could also be turbulent. Be aware of your communication style. Avoid going to extremes. Yeah, I mean, some another thing that I was reading was um, how with Mercury and Scorpio, things can come across very intense, even if they're not really intense subjects. So just be extra aware of that. I don't know about you, but I've been having some strange dreams. So I'm pulling out the dream deck by Torsomnirum or Onuromancy deck. Onuromancy? Is that how you say it? Stephanie, Ali, Alia. She makes an awesome, awesome decks. So let's talk to our subconscious. Let's talk to a deeper part of ourselves. We have Mercury moving into, into Scorpio. Scorpio season is almost upon us anyway. And let's just see what comes up. Oh, this is weird. I'm kind of numb in my thumb. The numb is thumb. The thumb is numb. <laughs> um, um, that's all I have to say. So this is challenging. But we'll do our best. We'll do our best. All right, well, we have death. There's Scorpio. You see the imagery I love so much on this deck? There's an eclipse up above the he uh, her head, that ring of fire, an eclipse. And death is the shattering of this mask, this facade. You can't hide anymore these days, people. Look within, showing up in reverse. It's time to look within for the key. You contain the entire universe within you, you know? And conflict. Okay. It's interesting. I didn't want to use the word conflict earlier, but it came up. I feel like in that particular sentence, it wasn't exactly what the word I wanted to use, but here we are. We have conflict. I do believe this is an inner conflict. <laughs> doesn't mean it doesn't have to do with other people. You know? If we look at the numerology, we have 6, 4, 11. All right. There's definitely a need to look within and bring something internally out to the surface. There's definitely something breaking free here. Let's see what else. It wants to say. Six of Pentacles in reverse. This is about hierarchies, balance. King of Pentacles in reverse. Chariot in reverse. Eight of Swords in reverse. And then Eight of Pentacles. Okay. And six of Cups. Ay, 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 ay. So there's a little bit of Libra energy balance, King of Pentacles. This does have to do with uh, where you're putting your power. Uh, are you misplacing your power? Are you giving your power away? Um, it's almost like, yeah, you're willing to put in the work in to, to create harmony with whatever it is that you're working on. But for some reason, the, there's a lack of enthusiasm. There's You're not really putting it forward even though it's there inside so I don't know what that's about it has to do with your personal power knight of cups okay that's movement with truth leading your heart it's very slow temperance that's Sagittarius energy that is big picture thinking it's also about um, experimentation this is about divine protection patience timing the magician, you have what it takes. Kind of waiting for all the resources to line up in a certain way. 
Um, and I said, because we have the King of Pentacles here, like somebody feels that they don't have what it takes. Um, definitely somebody's feeling very stuck. Um, but I do see also, you know, somebody in isolation also putting the work in and really wanting to have this beautiful, harmonious energy, the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups is a gift from the universe. You know, so look. This could have to do with work or love. You know, the Eight of Pentacles is traditionally the work card, but the Six of Cups is also about like the past, something nostalgic about the past. So it's almost like there's something about the past uh, we're not willing to let go of quite yet, or has lost enthusiasm. We're doing the work to see what, for example, if there have been relationships in the past that have failed, why did they fail? And did you give your power away? Were you codependent? Codependency is another theme that could show up a lot this week. Let's go back to our reading. Page of Wands, the beginning of a new journey, an adventure. Okay. The world, putting something to rest. That's in the center here. Definitely. And these are all the fixed signs represented here. So Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Leo. It's the end of the world as we know it. Lovers in reverse. There's that Mercury energy. That's Gemini energy, third house energy. The lovers, a choice. Hmm. Three of Cups in reverse. The Devil, that's Capricorn. Freedom, ambition. And the Tower in reverse. Okay, I don't know that I can just leave it there, but let's see what we have for now. You know, this is a big theme. To get unstuck, you have to tell the truth. That's just how it is. It, um, it's almost like somebody feels if I say, if I tell my truth, then people will be mad at me or something, you know, there will be conflict. I'll be creating conflict if I stick up for myself or if I say my truth. Um, you know, some things may end, things will change for sure. But I think you can only know by actually doing it by trying it. The magician here shows us that you do have what it takes even if you're unsure. I feel that avoiding this truth, whatever this represents for you, sure, it may lead to avoiding this tower moment. The devil here then is showing me that we're doing something because it's within our comfort zone. like. Or, for example, if you're lying or not telling the truth about something, um, we're sort of just tying ourselves up to um, this idea that things won't change. We're like saying like, oh, this, this could never change, but also you're not doing anything to change it. Do you know what I mean? And so it's avoiding this tower moment where potentially something does fall apart, but you're also... Uh, separating yourself from what could potentially be very happy celebrating energy where people where you're, you're actually together with people so maybe that's why the lovers this year is there's this choice by the way the magician is also mercurial gemini energy as above so below so within so without a reminder that we do create our realities with our choices. I need clarifications. What is the world here for? What does the world want to show us? What is coming to a close? Oh, well, then we got the fool. The fool popped out. So. It's not that we want something to end. We want something new to begin. Although, that's the same thing, isn't it? Something new to begin. Why is the devil here? 
Why is the devil here? Okay, yeah. Uh, Nine of Swords. You're overthinking it. The devil's here because we're, it's like being stuck in your mind, um, overthinking something, worrying about something if you're a worrier. Um, kind of I'm getting the energy of being caught in this like dark loop of overthinking and um, worrying that things are never going to change. Look underneath the Page of Swords, I just noticed that. That's the energy to deal with the tower. He says, look, I don't have all the experience, but I have a great idea and I think I have the, the desire really to address this conflict, to address this which is falling apart, to participate in rebuilding ultimately. Anything else? Take some final cards. Thank you very much. I know this is a weird, um, at least on my end, this feels like a weird reading because I feel I'm not totally here. I'm also in this pain hole, this eclipse pain hole, but I know you'll forgive me. All right, we have Judgment, Seven of Cups, the Emperor, and the Queen of Cups. Well, there's Aries showing up. There's this deep listening energy with the Queen of Cups. With Judgment and the Seven of Cups, I feel that we are waking up into a new life. Um, if you have felt confused, then there is clarity coming. Uh, definitely, this whatever this conflict is about, it's bringing, uh, bringing around more clarity. So either you're speaking your truth or somebody is speaking their truth. Somebody is stepping into a brand new life where things don't feel quite as confusing because now your mission, your, you know, the way you move yourself forward is more closely aligned with the things that you actually want in life and you're not really entertaining other prospects. This is the energy of letting go though. This isn't like you're taking action on anything specific. You're more so just, this is a deep internal assessment and awareness and then just letting the river flow. The Emperor card has, oh, well, not on this one. In the artwork of another card, there is a river that flows behind the Emperor. And it reminds us that if we're too controlling of a situation, you know, the like a dam on a river, it, it stops the flow. It constricts the flow. If you want things to flow easily, we have to not exert too much control over our life. Sometimes speaking your truth is just enough for things around you to align themselves. You know, people will decide for themselves, do they want to stick around or not? <clears throat> As an entrepreneur, it's my job to put myself, to bring all of myself to the table with a client and not hide parts of myself. Because if I was making myself small just so that somebody would like me or hire me, I'm not going to have a really good time. It's sort of like that, you know. So. Things might go away before they come in, but it's just making space for something much, much greater. I would love to read from the Dream Deck just as some closing remarks. Let's look at this Look Within card. The reversal of this card means you're too much in your head, which is exactly what I had said with this Nine of Swords, overthinking. Look to the external for inspiration and do work outside the mind and take action. Oh, okay. Ideas and thoughts are important, but they need to be put into action in order to fully manifest. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Put into action to manifest. I mean, I guess so. This could be like this call to action here. Ideas and thoughts are important, but they need to be put into action to fully manifest. I see that here with the magician. Temperance, magician, this is like having the idea of something, gathering the tools, and then Page of Wands is starting this adventure. Let's read the conflict card. The image of aggressive and energetic opposition, dreams of war, fighting, and so forth. Note the surrounding symbols. What is the conflict affecting? Whom is it between? What is the result? 
This can indicate a need to break through a message of stagnation, indicating a need to transform a disharmonious situation. If it is a case where conflict and drama are persistent, then the cards may be telling you that it is okay to stop engaging and that we are not losing when we walk away. We are making a decision for a more clear-headed, tranquil, and less chaotic situation. It is not a loss. It is a victory for the self to know when to put down one's sword and walk away from that, from that which does not serve the greater good. Totally. So there's a through line here of your... As you step into your authenticity, as you discover more parts of you that others should be aware of, either your inner feelings, your desires, what you want to achieve, um, in order to align yourself with other people who feel similarly, we need to walk away from situations that don't align with that anymore. So, I do, I, again, we're ending here on the Tower card, so this is why I say, Things may be leaving sooner than new things coming in, but I also see the Knight of Cups here, which is a lovely, you know, if, it, if this is about love for some people, this could mean that love is coming in and that this, whatever space is being cleared here is making room just for that. And finally, let's end on the Death card. There are many types of deaths. In this deck, it can represent the end of a cycle, a relationship, the ego, or old constructs that enforced illusions and did not allow us to see the truth. Here, the mask represents what we show others, what we think others want to see us, see of us. A realization, the truth, breaks the mask of illusion and reveals what is hidden. The person is broken and unhappy. It is a painful experience. You're telling me, dude. I'm in so much pain right now. Oh man, my friend always tells me because I have such difficult times around the lunations that my spirit evolves faster around the lunations. So I'm just going to take that as truth and say that this pain that I have now is just for my healing. So the person is broken and unhappy. It is a painful experience to face the truth of some situations. However, although the truth has caused heartbreak, within the heart is the birthing of the cosmos. You see that on her? Within the heart is the birthing of the cosmos. It is the birth of new loves, ideas, and endless possibilities. Sometimes in order to be our higher selves, we must have to destroy our masks and live in truth. It is the sacrifice of our old self so that our new self can rise anew from the ashes. And there's sacrifice again. I couldn't have made it more full circle than that. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye.